Alright guys, so I'm back from the steel yard. Went down to Patton's and picked up uh, some steel for a couple different projects that I'm working on here for the 48. Um, I picked up this big bad boy right here. Uh, it's a piece of 4 inch Schedule 40 um, pipe that I'm going to use for my exhaust cutouts on the transmission cross member. Um, the reason I had to go with the 4 inch Schedule 40 is uh, they didn't have 3.5 inch uh, HREW. So I couldn't get seam tubing, hot rolled electronically welded seam tubing uh, in the size I needed to provide a good buffer around our two and a half inch exhaust tubing. Uh, you don't want to have it too close if you notch your cross member because it, the transmission and the motor is going to move around a little bit and the exhaust is going to, going to move relative to the frame. So if I ran it with a quarter inch gap all the way around that'd be a little tight and uh, when the frame flexes going over a speed bump or something the exhaust tube could hit uh, the cutout in the cross member so just to eliminate that problem I'm running a half inch gap all the way around so I wanted a piece of three and a half inch 120 wall to weld into my 120 wall 2 by 3 transmission cross member uh, so that it would all be the same wall thickness but I couldn't get that size. So I saw this rem laying there. It's a, it's a piece of 4 inch Schedule 40 pipe with probably a 188 wall thickness, 316s. Yeah. Uh, which will work just great. It's a little thicker than the cross member, but that's fine. So my transmission cross member is 3 inches wide. So I'm going to cut two of these at 2 and 7 eighths. And what that will do is allow me to, the, the tubing will be slightly shorter than the width of the cross member. So that way I can center it up on the 120 walls of our cross member and weld in the perimeter there of the cut and across the faces. So I'll have it fully welded into the cross member on both sides. And that will just give us a nice little uh, quarter moon probably in the, in the, two, in the uh, cross member to clear our exhaust tubing. So it's a little bigger than what I wanted to run, but um, it'll work just fine.
Alright guys, so here's the uh, still hot cross member with the uh, exhaust reliefs cut into it. Came out, uh, came out alright. You know, uh, I'm still practicing the TIG, that's why I decided to TIG it. I, I tacked everything in place with the MIG so I could position in and then further grind down the pockets that I was welding in. Um, tacked them in place ground them down and then uh, took the TIG torch to it and it's uh, it'll work they're not great welds so if you're looking for stacked dimes fast forward or rewind or something but here's uh, here's how it came out so I got my pockets in there I've got to finish cleaning this up with the air grinder. So I've still got a little bit of work to do on the cross member. I've got to clean up the pocket I cut in the center uh, for reaching the bolt holes um, or the nuts on the transmission mount. I've got to clean that up with the air grinder and get that uh, just trimmed out a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and do that with it bolted to the truck. So I'm going to throw it back in here so I can continue working on the exhaust. Hey guys, so you saw me do some welding on this cross member here uh, today. Came out decent. You know, uh, they say they say the path to enlightenment involves a million steps and starts with just one. So I think I'm just a few steps into uh, my, my search for enlightenment here in the world of TIG welding. But uh, I think it came out decent. Uh, re reliefs are in there, uh, so our exhaust tubes can run right through the cross member, which will be nice. Keep it tucked up, keep it you know as high as possible. So if we do airbag the truck at some point and raise the running boards up, you know the exhaust won't be dragging on the ground. Uh, the running boards will still probably be the lowest part of the vehicle. Um, so yeah, I think it came out good. I'm gonna get under there and bolt it back in. Well guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me today. I uh, got a lot done. I uh, did a lot of running around today. Took a lot of video today. So uh, I should be posting a couple different videos today. Um, so I'm working on the exhaust. I got the cross member in, bolted in place and done. Started running my exhaust through it. Um, and what I'm doing now is fitting my first bend on the, on the pipes. Uh, into our collector flanges um, 
that bolt to the uh, collector of the exhaust headers. So, you know, you got to get that angle right, and you got to get that first pipe level, square, and straight, and then the rest is tack, 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 pull it out, weld it. Easy. <clears throat> What's critical is that first bend and getting that fitted up just right to the flange. So that's what I'm working on right now. I've got to trim. Uh, I've got to trim the passenger side about an inch, uh, so I can get that fitted into the collector flange nicely, and uh, and then go from there. The rest of it, like I said, goes pretty quick. So that's what I'm going to start on in the morning, um, and start knocking this out. I'm going to try and get uh, all the way back to just ahead of the rear axle where I'm going to locate the muffler and uh, the little bullets that we got and then I'm going to stop there until uh, the owner and I discuss it further see how these sound and figure out if we're going to add mufflers if we're going to uh, dump the the tailpipes out the sides um, which is what I'd like to do but uh, that's up to him and I thought I would share real quick um, a tip for trimming tubing and getting the end of it square and straight. <clears throat> it's pretty simple really. All you need is a is a piece of cardstock. So this is a piece of cardboard from something I had laying around uh, with a good straight edge on it. Okay. Wrap that around your tube. Line it up on itself with no overlap. And then take your marker, mark it around the edge, all the way around, trim your tubing. That gives you a nice straight square cut. Um, I usually use my two different chop saw or my two different angle grinders. I cut it off with a cutoff wheel and then square it to that line with the flap disc. And that's how I do it. It's pretty easy, just for rough cuts and for squaring things together. And then. Tack it, tack it together while you got the flap disc in hand. Clean up your tubing and uh, fit your pieces together. Tack everything, pull it all out, weld it all at one time, and then throw it back in there. So that's how I do it. That's how I'm t attacking this. Um, just the first step is to make sure that first bend coming off the collector is square, straight, and level, and uh, the rest of it's gravy. Uh, I got some uh, solid bar for my uh, donut hangers, for exhaust hangers, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to mount that into the frame rail. Uh, they're going to come off the frame and, and support the, the weight of the exhaust. I'm going to use two or three donuts per side. Uh, and I think what I might do that I've seen that's, that's really clean uh, way to do that is you just weld a bolt onto the end of your hanger and you bolt that into the frame so I would just drill a hole stick my bolt through there bolt it on and your hangers you know attached to your frame that way and it's bolted in if they ever want to you know change up the exhaust if the owner ever wants to do something different with the exhaust uh, the hanger locations are there and the hangers are there all they got to do is unbolt them so a little bit nicer and cleaner than welding them in but there's nothing really wrong with welding them in um, as long as you put them in the right places so that's it guys thanks for watching uh, please click like and subscribe 